Well, here we are at last. The final Dragon Quest game on the Famicom. Dragon Quest 3 was the moment where Dragon Quest went from being a kind of popular game to culturally dominant phenomenon. So what does that make Dragon Quest 4? In the months leading up to Dragon Quest 4's release, Enix ran a series of television commercials that just shows people doing normal things. Putting DQ4 up on the screen was more than enough to get people's attention. One of the things I do with Family Daily is I go through old Japanese game magazines looking for advertisements and unique art. The previews for Dragon Quest IV started one year before the game's release, and they continued in every issue for these bi-weekly magazines. Normally I might have an advertisement or two. Sometimes I'll even get lucky and have a couple of pages of previews that happen to use some early artwork. For Dragon Quest IV, I have 40 pages of material. Even before it came out, it was obvious that this was going to be a big deal. You might recall that Dragon Quest III had 10,000 people deep lines in front of stores. The out-of-control demand on the initial release of Dragon Quest III caused Enix to do a few changes for the follow-up. First, Dragon Quest III released on a Wednesday. Now, the story is that a law was passed in Japan that Dragon Quest couldn't be released on a weekday. That's not true. Enix voluntarily set their release dates for weekends, and Dragon Quest IV was released on a Sunday. Another issue was that stores were taking advantage of the out-of-control demand for Dragon Quest III and bundling the game with other things, requiring that people purchase them as a set. When this happened again with Dragon Quest IV, a major lawsuit was initiated, and it was one that changed how Japanese retailing worked. The timing of when Dragon Quest IV came out is important as well. It's the leading edge of a wave of RPGs on the system. Between February and April 1990, almost every RPG series on the Famicom had a release. By my count, there's eight series represented in that time frame, and a few more less significant RPGs that squeezed in. I suspect that most of them timed their release to try to catch the players who were coming off the Dragon Quest IV high and wanted another RPG. But this is the densest period of major RPG releases on the Famicom. Everybody's here, and it all kicks off with Dragon Quest IV. So what was the result of all this build-up, hype, and preparation for launch? Well, Dragon Quest IV sold half a million copies less than Dragon Quest III. That still makes it the fourth best-selling Famicom game of all time, and now it's time for me to retire that list. But popularity doesn't mean anything. How is Dragon Quest IV? Well, it's the apotheosis of the 8-bit RPG. For all the experimentation of form and style that other RPGs have done, it doesn't come close to Dragon Quest IV. And although its mechanics reflect the previous three games, here they are perfected. The next 10 years of RPGs are going to be responses to Dragon Quest IV. The first significant thing is that it's the first game in the Tenku trilogy. The previous three Dragon Quest games were loosely linked by being set in the same world. Though I think with the third game you really can't tell since it's a map of Earth. Dragon Quest IV, V, and VI are also all set in the same world. Additionally, Dragon Quest IV is the last Dragon Quest game by Toonsoft. While designer Yuji Hori sticks with the series, Enix brings the development in-house, and so Chunsoft heads off to revolutionize yet another genre. The world of Dragon Quest IV is a lot larger, a lot more vibrant, and a lot more scripted. There's little events that occur all around you, like this guy who'll get up and run over to the desk when you approach his shop. The day-night cycle from 3 is retained, and of course the characteristics of towns change at night. The big thing about Dragon Quest IV, the thing that makes it stand out and so memorable, is how the game itself is structured. Rather than having you step into the shoes of the hero and setting off to take on the world, instead, Dragon Quest IV starts with four RPGs before you get to that point. There's five chapters in Dragon Quest IV, although the fifth chapter is about half the game. And in the first four chapters, you play through the story of one of the supporting characters. They'll have their own adventure, fight a final boss, 
But some new crisis raises itself in the last moment, before cutting away to the next person. Chapter 1 has you playing as Ryan, a palace guard who's charged with finding out why children are disappearing. Ryan serves as an easy entry point for players, as the only action he can take in battle is to fight. Chapter 2 has you playing as Arena, a princess who's stifled in the castle and wants to test her skills against strong opponents. She can use some magic and also get some companions to help her on her way. Chapter 3 has you play as the most important character in the game, Torneko, the would-be weapon shop owner. He searches the world for things to sell in a shop that he wants to set up. In Chapter 4, you're playing as Manya and Minea, two sisters in search of their missing father. Then in Chapter 5, you can finally play as the hero. You can choose if the character will be male or female, and this time there's even different graphics for them depending on what you select. You reach Chapter 5 about 10 to 15 hours into the game, and in Chapter 5 the hero will recruit the other characters, plus find a few more allies, and you form a party out of these 10 people. When you find the cart, the ones who aren't active in the party will stay on the cart, but still gain experience after battles. If a character falls in a fight, the next character on the wagon will get off and join in. But you don't always have the wagon. If you go into a dungeon, then you just have the four characters with you. Late in the game, you'll also get a balloon to let you fly around the world, and once you press in a direction, the balloon won't stop moving in that direction. As you're walking around, you can hit the A button to bring up a familiar menu. Here you can talk, cast magic, check out your items. You also have to use a command to open any doors that you find. And then there's one absolutely vital command. Tactics is where you go to to set up your party, and to tell them what you want to do in battle. In combat, you only control the main character for that chapter. Everybody else follows the commands from the tactics menu. So you can tell them physical attacks only, conserve your magic, go all out, try random things. One clever thing here is that your party members will remember the strengths and weaknesses of monsters that they encounter and so they'll develop their own tactics that they'll follow. In combat, you first choose if you're going to fight or run away, but then after that you give a command to the person you're controlling. And here is the usual fight, magic, item, or defend. There's one more significant change that was made. Your money and experience rewards have been greatly increased in this game. You might still have to grind a little bit, but it is a very small amount and the enemies increase in power as you do. So after you get a couple levels under your belt, you'll start encountering stronger opponents as you wander the world. That's how you play the game, but the game isn't the end of Dragon Quest IV. The plot of the game was turned into a series of books written by Sayori Kumi. She was a popular romance novelist who also adapted Mother. And then there's the spin-offs, and this is where Dragon Quest IV's reach really extends. For example, Climax Entertainment was hired to create a spin-off action game. It was cancelled, so they changed out the characters and released it as Lady Stalker. That marked it as a sequel to Land Stalker, not a game about stalking women. Chunsoft themselves made a spin-off. They took The Merchant and created Torneko no Dai Boken, Fushigi no Dungeon. It was the first in a series of roguelikes called the Mystery Dungeon series and that series now has nearly 30 games all on its own. Dragon Quest IV set a new standard for RPGs, and everybody is going to be playing catch-up. There's only a handful of RPGs on the Famicom that even come close to this, and one of them is Dragon Quest III. A new era of video games was dawning in 1990, and Dragon Quest IV was their harbinger. All of the 16-bit RPGs that will flood the Super Famicom are following in the mold that Dragon Quest IV created. Until Final Fantasy VII hits seven years later, this is the game that all Japanese RPGs are going to be measured by.